Hi, I'm Eric Namaki. I'm in this neighborhood where it has more churches in a condensed area than anywhere else in the world. This place is just a man, National Historic Landmark. Here's a place where there's a constant migration of people and cultures. Welcome to a place where all the streets are named after birds, just like quail and clover. Funky houses, funky stores. Excuse me. Funky people. Boy, this is funky town. Here's a cool funky little restaurant called the Coffee Pot. There are tons of these small businesses here in Birdtown. I know, actually, the few businesses that just opened, I think people look forward to it. I think they used to all be from Birdtown, yeah. But since the change of donors, I think it's mm -hmm. a you know, small I'm not what I want. Here's an interesting coffee shop. Yeah, let's go in. There are so many, like, businesses like this, which hopefully it stays that way for a long time. Um, but I think that that kind of keeps some of those businesses away a little bit because it's not a necessity for us to have them because we have so many businesses like this. You know, the whole um, opening up of chains, that's, I mean, that has a lot to do with the community changing. Um, I think a lot of people are against it though, which um, I don't understand how it, how it was able to be, to happen. I am not a fan. Um, I think it takes away from the kind of like community feel that Lakewood has and the like not necessarily small town but kind of small town feel that it has. Here's the former home of Play It Again Sam. They're a vintage record and electronic store. They've been located here on Quail Street for the past 30 years but now they've relocated out of Birdtown just down the street. Because of a change of landlords over the decades, a lot of mom and pop shops in Birdtown have lost business. This is one of the last ones and no longer exists in Birdtown anymore. Oh yeah, more open and hopefully a lot more visibility from the street. Well, we, we don't really do a lot of walk-in traffic. Mm -hmm. It's mostly people that come from all over to find us. The problem that's happening in this economy is they're tearing everything down that was affordable and putting up expensive stuff and driving all the little businesses out. You know, you can't be in a strip mall with a business like this at $2,800 a month rent. I mean, you just couldn't do it. So there's got to be a place where, you know, all your little antique stores and all your niche little places can be. You want to have a strength of an area. <laughs> Maybe their sign cost a dollar. This is just an example of some of the big stores that are coming into Birdtown that people don't like. Yes, and they don't carry everything you need, as we found out. Such as great drink, bobby pins, sunscreen, and water. We're about to go visit three Birdtown ladies who spent their childhood and most of their adult lives here. Their names are Helen Rose and Marge. The three of them are responsible for making Birdtown a national historic landmark. How have you how have you saw yeah, that Birdtown has changed, or has it, has it not changed for you? It's changed since its inception, definitely, because the original people, of course, got older. They had their families grew up, and their families left after they got married and new people came in, different nationalities. Now it's all kinds of nationalities. Before it used to be mostly Slovaks and Polish, Ukrainian, but now there's from A to Z. But it, it, it's still in good shape. It's basically the same other than, there used to be a lot of stores all individual little stores, but now if you notice they're kind of boarded up. 